Hello everyone! Welcome back to Hunter Hunter Institute, where we discuss everything Hunter Hunter related. In today's highlight, one of the characters who specializes in combat, Finks. He's part of the infamous Phantom Troop, a band of thieves who all have Class A bounties on their head. When he first appeared wearing his headpiece, did you also think he's not that great of a character? I sure did, but boy was I wrong. Sure enough, we get to see more of Fink's interesting points later on in the series. Like that battle he had with the Chimera Ant. That one had a very tough shell, but Fink's beat it in one hit. K.O. That scene was impressive. In this video, let's talk about Fink's. His character, his strengths, and his connection with the other troop members. He made his first appearance during the York New City arc when he and the rest of the Phantom Troop were revealed. With the number of scenes and appearances that he has, I'm sure we'll have a lot to discuss. To make this video more interesting, let's also check just how strong Finks is compared to the other members of the troop. Who do you think is stronger than Finks? Who's weaker than him? Let's discuss all that. So grab your favorite snack and enjoy this video till its end. Give us a thumbs up if you're one of the fans who likes Finks. Better yet, why not drop a comment and tell us what part of Finks you like? We love hearing from you fellow Hunter Hunter fans. And with that, let's start. 1. Finks Mag Cub as you know by now, Finks is one of the members of the Phantom Troop. They all have Class A bounties, and not even the most skilled pro hunters could get their hands on them. Finks' number in the troop is 5. He's been a part of it since its earlier days. Similar to most of the troop members, he also came from Meteor City, a place that will accept anything thrown into it. Coming from a city filled with people who do not exist in any official records, Finks himself doesn't know his birthday, nor his blood type. His name was derived from the Sphinx, one of the sacred beings from the Egyptian myths. It has the face of a human and the body of a lion. In Finx's headpiece, though, we see a snake design instead of a lion. During his first appearance, he was wearing an outfit quite similar to a pharaoh, with a golden snake-like headpiece and a matching necklace to boot. Doesn't it make you wonder where he got this outfit? And why? Without the headpiece, we see his hair all brushed up. Gives him a tough look. Well, he doesn't just look tough, he is tough. Actually, even within the troop, He's considered to be very ruthless and very tough. Together with Nobunaga and Feitan, he is part of the troop's commando team. During the flashback of their younger days, we get to see a rather, uh, interesting expression from Finks, as he tried, keyword tried, to threaten Krolo to give him the tape. Question time! How many times did Finks wear his Egyptian-like costume and headpiece? Do you remember? If you answered twice, you got it right. First time was during his first appearance, and the second time was much later in the Chimera Ant arc when they were in Meteor City. In the other scenes where he appeared, we see him wearing a jersey. His weird headpiece and Egyptian-like costume that he only wore twice, it seems like he had the same purpose as Natero's heart t-shirt. It looks like it's Fink's special battle clothes. Quite a unique taste, don't you think? Personality As you might have noticed, Fink's is quite brash and aggressive. We all saw this during the York New City arc. Remember the leader of Neon Nostrant's bodyguards, Dalzone? Finks ruthlessly beat him down with a single blow. That must have hurt a lot. Let's take a look at some of the other violent stuff that he did. Broke the necks of the Mafia members who were running auctions, hijacked a car and stole it from one of the Greed Island copies that Batera bought, and then inside the game he went and killed a bunch of players. For fun. He is definitely one of the crueler characters in the series. Another scene that comes into mind was when Kurapika managed to kidnap Krolo in York New City arc. During this time, the troop was split into two sides. There's the first side, Nobunaga, Machi, and Shizuku, members who prioritize the safety of their leader, and then there's the other side, Finks, Feitan, and Shalnark, members who prioritize killing the chain user Kurapika. With the troop members on disagreement about this, it ended up spiraling down into a very critical situation. I'm sure a lot of you will remember how the troop had some very particular rules when it comes to things like this. Depending on the situation, even Krolo, the head of the troop, must be forcibly cut off and sacrificed if it is for the sake of the troop's survival. Despite all these rather cruel things, Finks also has a not-so-ruthless side. When it comes to his fellow troop members, he definitely treats them like comrades, like his friends. He even calls most of them with nicknames. Before her death, Pakunoda used her memory bomb on Feitan, Machi, Nobunaga, Shalnark, Franklin, and Finks. After that, it was Finks who explained the reason of Paku's death to the rest of the troop. Even though he was saying that they should prioritize killing Kurapika instead of agreeing with Pakunoda's actions and decisions, it seems that among all the members, it was Finks who understood Pakunoda's feelings the most. Not what you would expect after their disagreement. Later, when Finks and Feitan accidentally met Killua and Gon in the auction, remember how funny their faces were, Gon asked them about Pakunoda, 
Finks told him the truth, that she died. Recalling some of Pakunoda's memories when she was with the two younger boys, Finks decided to tell them, Paku was thankful to you guys. And with that, they parted ways. Did that part change your opinion of the Phantom Troop? For me, it sure did. Moving forward to the Chimera Ant arc, one of the squadron leaders, Zazan, was unfortunately settled down in Meteor City, Fink's hometown. She's turned a huge number of the residents into mutant slaves. Although they had already turned into Chimera Ants, Fink shouted at them to show their spirit until the end, rather than just begging to be killed. They were residents of the Meteor City, after all. Instead of just killing them, Finks pushed the Chimera Ants to not give up without a fight. Perhaps they thought that since they were going to die anyway, they should at least die with honor instead of pity. After that battle, we see Shizuku wearing Finks's shirt. Since her clothes got ripped apart from the battle with the squad leader Pike, it seems like Finks had lent her his shirt. Quite a gentleman, if I may say so. This just shows us that he has a side that looks after his friends. In one of the chapters that showed us their childhood, there was a scene where Sarasa asked Finks, help me hand out the sweets. Ah, why me, was Fink's rebellious reply. Although he was very reluctant to do it, we see him giving out the snacks with the other kids. It was a short scene, but it was a good one. It gave us another glimpse of Fink's good and caring side. After that, Sarasa then goes and says, Fink's is kind by nature, so it's okay. Maybe she's right. Fink's character is a mirror of the ruthlessness of the Phantom Troop, and he tends to give a scary vibe as a first impression. This is, of course, to preserve the dignity of the Phantom Troop, as well as keep their ironclad rules. Even though his emotions tend to get the better of him, he's very capable of cooperating with the other members when it's needed. We'll talk more about this later, but I'd like to mention that Finks's Nen type is Enhancement, which is the same type as Gon and Yuvagin. Because of this, it's easy to think that Finks is a musclehead like Gon and Yuvo. But in contrast, Finks is actually quite knowledgeable about Nen. There were a few scenes where we see Finks display his knowledge of Nen while he was explaining things to other characters. One of them is when he taught Gon and Killua about how Nen grows stronger after death. There was also that time during Feitan's fight with Zazan. We see Finks explain to Kaluto how a weak hit can do a huge deal of damage if it was thrown with Aura. Finks certainly knows a lot of stuff about Nen. 3. Nen Ability Although Finks was shown in many battle scenes, it was only during the Chimera Ant arc when we first see him using his Nen. We see him activate his enhancement type attack, Ripper Cyclotron. With this ability, his power multiplies every time he winds his arm. This means that his punching power increases and increases the more he rotates his arm. Talk about a boost of power. As an enhancer, this skill definitely matches Finks. Within the Hunter Hunter series, there are many, many complicated Nen abilities. Compared to those, Finks's Ripper Cyclotron is much easier to understand, just like the other enhancement type abilities. Very simple, but very powerful. During his fight with the Chimera Ant, he rotated his arm 15 times. In this scene, Finks's right arm and Gon's Jajankin are very similar. It seemed like the aura in his arm ended up being much more than he expected he'd need. Just look at how the ant soldier was literally blown into pieces after his attack. While the Ripper Cyclotron isn't inferior to attacks like Yuvagin's Big Bang Impact and Gon's Jajankin, which are extreme enhancement attacks, they seem to be a rumor that this is one of the weakest Nen abilities. Let's see the reason why that's the case. Reason 1. Charging up his power while winding his arm takes time. In the Hunter Hunter world, the situation of the fight changes moment by moment in each second. This becomes much more obvious during battles between expert users of Nen. When using the Ripper Cyclotron, the stronger the opponent, the amount of charge needed also increases, which means that Finks will also have to rotate his arm more times. It ends up becoming a weak spot, and surely the Nen experts are not going to overlook that. Can you imagine them just waiting for Finks while he takes some time to wind his arm? It seems like this ability only works if the opponent is weak. At that fight, Finks' opponent is just an ant soldier, not even a squadron leader, just an ant soldier. Would the Ripper Cyclotron have worked against a squad leader like Zazan? With how fast her battle was with Feitan, to the point that even Kaluto found it difficult to follow, it's somehow doubtful that Finks' ability will be as impactful as Feitan's attack. But perhaps Finks can do the rotating faster and was just doing it slowly to taunt the weak ant soldier. What do you think? Reason 2. Well, it seems like Finks himself doesn't know how many rotations he needs to beat the opponent. In his fight with the ant soldier, he rotated his arm 15 times. But after the fight, he goes and said half would have been fine. This seems like he ended up wasting some of his aura, which isn't a very good idea considering how it is technically their source of power. In the world of Nen, Aura is one of the most important keys that will determine whether they lose or not. When fighting with a very strong opponent, 
isn't it a fatal mistake to waste aura? That's probably the last thing you want to do. Or does Finks have a great amount of aura, so great that he can afford to use more than he needed? Reason 3. The fact that this attack can only be used in close range combat. The more times he winds his arm, the more aura Finks gathers. This means that he can hit the opponent with a really strong punch, that is, if he actually lands the hit. If he released his charged up aura in the punch but it doesn't hit the opponent, uh oh, sounds like bad news. Gon has similar attacks with similar weak points, but to make up for this weakness, he has mid-ranged and long-ranged attacks. He did a lot of practice using his transmutation type ability, Scissors, and his emission type ability, Paper. Due to the nature of his Ripper Cyclotron, it is only bound to work in close range combat. Considering all these, it seems like it's the weakest Nen attack, doesn't it? Well, I don't really agree. Seeing at how composed and good at analyzing Finks is, I'm sure he's got this weakness covered. Perhaps we just haven't had the chance to see the rest of his abilities. Abilities like Phaetan's Pain Hacker and Rising Sun. Finks probably also has mid-ranged and long-ranged attacks. Who knows? Maybe we'll see the rest of his skills in future chapters. 4. Strengths We kind of looked down at Ripper Cyclotron earlier, but this time, let's flex Finks' strengths and good points in the series. Compared to his fellow troop members, we can see that Fink's physical strength is superior to others. Here's some proof in order. When it comes to the strength of arm wrestling, Fink's ranked second only to Yuvigen in the troop. That's to say, he ranked even higher than Hisoka. And we're talking about THE Hisoka, one of the cruelest characters in the series. He single-handedly controlled multiple human beings, swinging them all around during his fight with Krolo at the Heavens Arena. One of the most important factors in measuring strength is power, right? Finks' extraordinary physical strength, topped up with his Ripper Cyclone, if used on the right opponent, at the right setting, is quite effective. Imagine that Finks is fighting against an opponent who is pushy and aggressive. As a close combat specialist, there's a huge chance that he'll win, right? Finks' great strength is not just his physical strength. When the troop members tried entering Greed Island in an illegal way, they were welcomed by Razor in a not-so-friendly way. This guy's strong, Finks commented after calmly analyzing Razor. Come back the right way, and you'll be welcomed here, Razor told them before using the spell, Eliminate. With this, they were immediately kicked out of the island, but it showed us a hint at how good Finks is when it comes to analyzing his opponents. Top class physical strength among the troop and ability to calmly analyze the opponents at a glance. The combination of these two shows us Finks' real power. Another thing to consider is how Phantom Troop's members have different roles that allow them to move freely by themselves. Let's look at the members and compare some of them to Finks' abilities. Krolo. As a leader, he gathers the members of the troop together when needed. Pakunoda, a member who can read memories. Shalnark, as someone very knowledgeable, he takes lead when the leader is absent. Shizuku, with her sharp eyes, she has the ability to see through traps. She is also part of the support team. Finks and Feitan, members of the commando team. Looking at this, I wouldn't think that Finks, who's part of the commando team, is actually weaker than the members of the support team. Machi. Using the abilities of her Nen Thread, she can both fight and do first aid. Kortopi, with his ability to create copies of stolen goods, he was assigned with a technical role. Considering that Finks is part of the commando team whose members specialize in fighting, wouldn't he be stronger compared to Machi and Kortopi, based on their roles? Banolinov, a fighter who can transform. While aboard on the Black Whale, there's a scene where Shizuku and Banolinov team up with Krolo on their hunt for Hisoka. We see here how Banolinov is able to support other members while also being a fighter. His Nen ability uses his own body to create music. Similar to Finks' ability, he also needs to charge before he can attack. With this, it's difficult to say he could win against Finks, who is not only fast, but also good at fighting. Next, let's look at Hisoka. Finks might specialize in fighting, but if his opponent is someone like Hisoka, his chances of winning don't look good. Hisoka even managed to trifle with a skilled hunter like Krolo who can steal abilities. He even used bungee gum to swing many people back and forth like a hammer. If Finks doesn't use other attacks aside from his Ripper Cyclotron, it's most likely that Hisoka will destroy him while using mid-range offense and defensive attacks. The conditions are terrible for Finks if his only attack is a close-range one. Feitan. For the same reason as with Hisoka, if Finks was to fight against Feitan, who can do both close range combat and an attack like Rising Sun that can cover a wide range, then the chances of Finks winning also look bleak. Franklin. In contrast to Finks, who can only do close range combat, Franklin specializes in far range attacks with his double machine gun. If the fight was to happen in a flat, empty terrain, Franklin could easily aim an attack even from a distance. 
However, if it was set in a place like a town or city where there are many places where you can hide, then it becomes a close range combat. Finks would be able to take advantage of this by surrounding and his chances of winning become higher. And last, Nobunaga and Yuvagin. Nobunaga wields a sword, whereas Yuvagin does hand-to-hand -hand combat. The three of them all specialize in close range combat. I would say that Finks, Nobunaga, and Yuvagin all have the same level of strength. Not that any of them will be happy to hear that. Within the troop, how would you rank Finks' strength? We'd love to see your thoughts in the comment section below. 5. Finks and Feitan Although Finks is quite confrontational in addition to him being physically strong, it doesn't mean that he tends to isolate himself away from the group. Quite the contrary. When he lent his own clothes to Shizuku after hers got torn apart in her battle with Pike, we get a glimpse of his Frank side. Among his many scenes, most of them were together with Feitan, who is also in the commando team. Feitan, ruthless and inhumane. For him, the troop's rules matter more than their leader. Finks and Feitan's personalities are a good fit together. So let's take a look at some of the best scenes showing the camaraderie between these two. The first thing that comes to mind, the two of them hunting players in Greed Island. They came to Greed Island after robbing one of the consoles from Batera. The instant they entered the game, off they went killing players. But for them, that alone wasn't fun enough. More than beating the game, they focus more on who can kill the most number of players. Let's not forget that Shalnark, Shizuku, and Kordopi also went to Greed Island. Rather than playing the same game as Finks and Feitan, which was hunting players, the three of them were planning to take out the in-game items. Of course, in true Phantom Troop sense, illegally. I think that more than robbing, Finks and Feitan prefer killing. Looks like this is how they bond together. Next scene. Let's jump to the Chimera Ant arc. During his fight with Zazan, Feitan gets his arm broken. Finks calls out to him, Fei, want to change with Bono? Did you hear that? Fei? No one in the troop not even in the entire cast of characters in the series, has ever called Feitan Fey. That is, no one but Finks. Just another proof of how good they get along. Next, the Dark Continent arc. While they were aboard on the Black Whale, we see the finks Feitan duo walking around the ship. But this time, they're together with Nobunaga, who's trying to get back his sword that got mixed up with the Black Market stock. Finks also said that he wants to get a weapon as well, even though he doesn't use any weapon since he fights with his bare hands. We all know it's an excuse for him and Feitan to go together with Nobunaga. These two have a lot of scenes together that does not involve fighting. Comparing it to the main characters, don't you think they're quite similar to Gon and Killua? If ever a scene about the Phantom Troop's past is released, wouldn't it be interesting to see younger Finks and Feitan combo doing some training together? A fan can hope. Phantom Troop's Finks Although he has many appearances in the series, we haven't yet seen all of his abilities. Makes you wonder what that outfit was on his first appearance, right? Fellow fans, if you have watched this video and ended up liking Finks' character more, then you're already a part of the Hunter Hunter Institute. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join us in our future videos. We will continue diving into the splendid world of Hunter Hunter. Our research is over this time, but fear not, we'll be back with more Hunter Hunter content. Thank you for watching. Till the next video, take care, fellow researchers.